Oh, uh, here we are. <laughs> oh. Hello. Thank you so much. Your Holiness, it's lovely to see you again. Uh, thank you really so much for joining us today. Uh, and thank you to all the audience that we have out there. Um, it's lovely to have you with us too. Uh, I'm Richard Layard. I'm an economist from the London School of Economics. Uh, and I'm also a co-founder of Action for Happiness. And for Action for Happiness, uh, this is a very special day because this is our 10th birthday. Uh, and wonderful to be able to celebrate it with you. We've now got uh, a quarter of a million members. We've got one and a half million followers. Uh, and as you know, um, all the members have pledged to try to live in a way uh, that creates as much happiness in the world as possible. Uh, and I think it was that message that uh, made you decide to become our patron, which we are so, so pleased about. So it, it's, um, it's great that you're here uh, for this birthday, because actually you joined Action for Happiness before it was launched. Uh, I wonder if you remember that we were sitting on the stage in Zurich uh, discussing secular ethics. And I mentioned that we were going to uh, launch a movement to promote uh, secular ethics and happier living. Uh, and it was going to have members. And immediately your hand went up. So you are our first member, uh, which is, which is, uh, is, 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 is what was a wonderful start. Um, anyway, the, the last time uh, that we met was when you came to London um, and uh, in that uh, theatre, uh, we discussed uh, the principles of action happiness and you launched our new course on uh, exploring what matters. Uh, and I wanted to tell you uh, how successful that course has been. Uh, it's been taken by thousands of people, uh, but we also did a proper randomized control trial to see what difference it made to people's happiness, but also to their compassion. And we found effects which were so large that we were really uh, even ourselves uh, astonished at them. Uh, we found that people's happiness uh, increased by more than when they found a partner for their life, uh, or indeed uh, found a job after being unemployed. So two months after the course, we were already uh, seeing people's lives being transformed, um, which I suppose is not that surprising because what we were teaching in the course was that uh, wonderful philosophy of positive living, which we've learned, learned from you. So, so my, my most vivid memory of that uh, launch day six years ago was after the event uh, and you were being interviewed by the BBC uh, interviewer uh, behind the stage. I don't know if you remember, but um, he said to you, what is the single most important secret for happier living? And you said immediately, warm heart. Uh, and uh, that, that, that really, really hit me in my, <laughs> my midriff and it brought tears to my eyes. Um, but of course, and this is what I uh, would like you, if you could, to begin on. Um, there's an obvious question, you know, how do we have a warmer heart? So that's my question. My first question to you, Your Holiness, is how do we make our hearts warmer? <clears throat> oh, with warm heartedness, and taking care of others' well-being. It is by birth. We already sort of equipped that. We are social animal. One individual's survival depends on the community. Firstly, as soon as we're born, our mother's affection. Uh, you see, that uh, affection is key factor for our survival. If sort of baby without sort of taking care by mother, 
by her mother, then uh, would die. So that's, uh, we are, as a social animal, uh, we form our own mother and survived with mother's milk. So therefore, our basic physically, uh, our sort of very much nature uh, taking care. Uh, firstly from mother's side, and then ourself, you see, taking care, one's own mother, one's own uh, brother, sisters, and family member. So, they taking care each other is by nature. Uh, basically, we are social animal. Therefore, you see the affection, warm-heartedness, taking care of each other is the key factor. Uh, not necessarily connected with religious belief. Without religion, simply as soon as we're born, you see the, the warm-heartedness uh, towards one's own mother and family member. So, uh, warm-heartedness, uh, since that is some uh, part of our nature, now the problem I feel our existing education, you see, uh, mainly come from a West materialistic sort of society. So now, in education, we should include uh, how to keep uh, peace of mind and a healthy body and a happy family. Uh, then, you see, uh, nothing to do with religious belief, simply warm-heartedness. Uh, so now in education, we should uh, include education about warm-heartedness. The school children, they know in their school, teacher always smiling and, and joking. And then student very happy come that class. And the class, the teacher always show angry, angry face. <laughs> that student, uh, very unhappy, come to that class. And then animal also. Uh, if you show warm-heartedness, like dog, and even some birds, if you show warm-heartedness, then uh, dogs always sort of, uh, as they show, uh, also friendly attitude. They are tail, go like that. If you show some angry face, even dogs are uh, <laughs> unhappy. So bird. Uh, once I visit, I think. Uh, was there one garden when I visit there, birds uh, come and people, you see, feeding bird in their own arm. Oh. And bird come, uh, take some uh, seed like that. So warm-heartedness uh, is the key factor to create happy sort of community. This is nothing to do with religion. By birth, we already have you see, that seed. Now education, uh, in modern education, we should include how to keep uh, inner peace. Uh, 
So, uh, according to Indian, or generally, you know, the secular, secular, nothing to do with religion, uh, simply how to keep individual happy person and happy family and happy community, uh, eventually happy world, you see, through warm-heartedness and a sense of brotherhood, sisterhood, then we can truly develop peaceful human society. Uh, I always sort of uh, determined to uh, build uh, humanity with a sense of oneness of human being uh, and a sort of different uh, nationality, a different color, different religion. These are secondary. The basic thing is we are the same human being. We need concept of oneness of seven billion human beings. Yes. Uh, the um, I suppose that that um, some people are born, as you say, everybody is with an inner capacity for warmth, but they have some very tough experiences, and that makes them unable to respond. It gives them a, a, a cold heart uh, as a method of defence against what might be happening to them. So, so I wondered if I could ask you actually uh, how you have managed, because you have had some very bad experiences having to leave your country. Uh, you've had to be a head of state, which is a very lonely position. Uh, you, you've not had an easy life, but somehow you've, you've kept this radiance, this inner radiance, which we've all experienced, and this, this, this lovely sm smile, if I may say so. <laughs> so, so how, how have you personally managed to pre prevent these, these uh, problems uh, from making your, your heart less warm? Uh, well, my question is, how have, you, have you, how have you preserved this inner radiance and your smile? Right. Uh, firstly, whole Tibetan cultural heritage. You see, uh, don't harm other. Even insect from, or say, from our family, it is our tradition. When child, you see, try to uh, catch fly or something, and then the family members say, "Don't kill, don't kill." So that's our habit. Uh, because of the Tibetan community, uh, we are as a practitioner of uh, Buddha Dharma, the Buddhism. They, like any other religion, the key message of all religion is affection. Whether Christian or Muslim or Buddhist or Jain. So I myself used to come from that kind of also family. And then my family, my mother, very kind, kind woman. Then uh, uh, people choose me as a uh, Dalai Lama's reincarnation. Then I came in uh, Lhasa, study, study. So on basis of our uh, sort of heritage, or uh, more uh, compassionate sort of herit herit heritage, uh, on top of that, study about Buddhist philosophy, these things. Very useful. And then uh, come to India as a re refugee. So that also very helpful for my life. 
Uh, if you come to India, the free country, democratic country, and uh, all major world religious tradition live together here. Basically, uh, different religion mutual respect each other. That's India's tradition. So I came uh, here as a refugee. At the same time, I am the guest of Indian government. So I'm very happy, very safe, very happy, and enjoy India's freedom, uh, India's democratic sort of system. Uh, so, uh, so anyway, uh, sometimes I feel if I still remain inside Tibet, maybe something different. As a refugee, come to this country, remain guest of Indian government. Now I'm very happy. So, uh, so my sort of my sort of responsibility is to share uh, my own sort of inner peace, uh, and that also on secular basis without religion. So I also have. Last few decades, I have special connection with modern scientists. So now scientists also now realize calm mind, or oh, this the basis of peace of mind is something very important. Even physically, so peace of mind, or oh, that. Uh, create all body element become more normal way. Too much anger, uh, too much suspicion. Then mental level, much sort of disturbed, like that. So peace of mind is very, very helpful. And then circumstances also, you see, give me opportunity to uh, practice that. And then uh, more sort of contact with uh, people from different country or different religious background. Uh, whenever I met people, I never consider I'm Tibetan, I'm Buddhist. I never consider. I simply consider we are same human being. So whenever I meet some someone, I always smile. <laughs> well, it's wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And, and, and they, say, they say every cloud has a silver lining, uh, and certainly uh, we have benefited in the West, uh, even though the Tibetan people have lost from your coming out uh, and touching us all in the way. So extraordinary, you have made a revolution in the West, in point of fact. So if we moved on from... The, the inner peace and serenity issue to the, the issue of human relationships uh, with other people, um, which we know from we know from our experience and from research, including kind of research we do at the London School of Economics, we know the huge importance of good relationships uh, for uh, happy living relationships in the family, relationships at work. Uh, relationships in the community, all these things are very important. Um, but um, relationships can involve uh, elements of stress uh, and how to handle this. Now, some people say, uh, I had a very interesting conversation with Thich Nhat Hanh. He said, in, in any uh, stressful relationship, all you can do is manage your own feelings for the other person. You just improve your own self. But other people say, especially in the West, that it's important to be open about how you would like the other person to change. So I'd, I'd really be interested. How, what, what, what in your mind is the secret of building and maintaining good relationships? 
as I already mentioned, I believe entire seven billion human beings are same human brothers, sisters. Uh, then uh, I believe now thinking my nation, uh, my government, my country, uh, that, that kind of thinking is now outdated. Uh, in the past uh, several centuries, because of too much emphasis, my nation, my community, my power, then conflict, these things happen. So now, today, we should think oneness of seven billion human beings. We should think a uh, peaceful world. Uh, so the thinking my nation, uh, my community, my religious group, that's outdated. Now time come, we should think uh, entire seven billion human beings. We have to live together side by side. Eastana, Westana, Northana, uh, Southana. Different color, uh, different sort of tradition. But we are the same human being. We have to live together on this planet. So therefore, uh, see, when we think more realistic way, then naturally, the, what's the, uh, warm-heartedness and with the, cons with the conviction of oneness of seven billion human beings, uh, so therefore, the, uh, now thinking my nation, my community, uh, on the basis of different color, different religion, that is outdated. Now we have to think oneness of seven billion human beings and try to uh, educate every human being. We are same human being. We have to live side by side on this planet. Now on top of that, now climate condition now changing. Uh, uh, and global warming also now becoming something serious. Well, because of these sort of circumstances, now uh, we have to live together and uh, helping each other. That's the only realistic way. Okay. But what, what would you say to um, people who are in a conflict with some, some family member? Um, they obviously have to work on their own feelings about the other person. But how open should they be with the, the other person? Uh, about how they want the other person to be. Uh, put it this way, um, to what extent can you try to change another person? How, how much should you be open about how you want them to be? As I mentioned earlier, we are a social animal. We have to live together, side by side. So, uh, according to that circumstances, if we consider uh, all other, irrespective of what different attitude, even if the angry person, still human brother. Uh, so, uh, so, if someone who show negative attitude towards you, you should feel pity. Uh, and then, uh, in spite of their side attitude, you should keep warm-heartedness and on the basis of oneness of seven billion human beings on this planet, then uh, today's sort of uh, enemy, so-called enemy, you see, very possible 
the after one week, after a month, will change. If the other person more negative attitude, and you also respond same way, then the problem never end, never disappear. So, the uh, my own sort of experience. I always used to keep more warm-heartedness uh, towards everybody, including those people who carry some sort of problem on us. Keep as a human brother, sister. Things are changing. Okay. Well, I think, I think that's a, I think it's a wonderful way of putting it. Thank you so much. So, so and what what uh, you are talking about is really a, a fundamental change uh, in our culture. And I know that we have discussed this before, the need for secular ethics as the basis for building a new and more generous culture. And I remember I asked you once, uh, were you uh, thinking of founding an organization to promote a change in culture in the West? Uh, and and you said, that, no, that's, that's not my role. I can teach, but I can't form an organization. So that was when I told you we were forming an organization that was going to uh, try to do exactly that. Um, and I think that's why you, you wonderfully agreed to be our patron. And so we now have hundreds of thousands of people uh, around the world taking daily action um, in their lives um, to be happier uh, and uh, kinder to other people. So as we celebrate this movement of ours, the 10th anniversary of this movement, uh, what is your message to this global Action for Happiness community? Uh, we'd love to hear what you think of what we have achieved and what we're trying to do. What, what is your message to the members of our Action for Happiness community? You see, your uh, organization, or your group uh, without religion simply uh, the, uh, warm heart, with warm-heartedness and a peaceful sort of attitude. Uh, that is a wonderful, very practical. And that is almost, I think, the hope of future. future future, if we create happy world, happy humanity, now that is the only way. You see, too much emphasis on, uh, on religious basis or uh, racial basis, and then uh, difficult. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the concept of oneness of seven billion human beings. So now your uh, society, uh, really wonderful. Uh, without a religious belief, and simply as a human being, as a social animal, we have to live together and much happier live uh, uh, also helping each other. So your uh, sort of uh, society, uh, your sort of what say the uh, responsibility because of the activities, really very 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 wonderful. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. Um, I, I hope that um, some of the members of the audience who are not yet members of Action for Happiness will be inspired by what you've said to uh, become members, um, because we do think that we are uh, having an impact uh, in our own way towards making a happier world. Um, now, the person who created our movement uh, is Mark Williamson. Uh, he's our wonderful director. He's a, a, an incredibly 
inspiring person. He's also a very well organized person, fortunately, and fortunately he also is a master of IT, which uh, <laughs> I wish, uh, which I was more of. So I'm going to hand over now to Mark uh, to host the questions from our audience uh, to you, Your Holiness. So, so Mark, take over. Thank you so much, Richard. And Your Holiness, it is uh, a pleasure to see you again. I have very happy memories from our time together in London when you came to launch uh, one of our community activities and as Richard has said, we have so many thousands of people all around the world taking action to contribute to your vision for a happier and kinder society. And I'm so happy that some of them are with us for this event, this special time together. And we have now some questions from the community. And our first question is from Minda. Namaste, Your Holiness. My name is Minda Baines. I have two children and my question is, what can we do to support children and young people whose mental health has suffered during the pandemic? Thank you. Uh, this, uh, what's the name? Pandemic. 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 Oh, now this illness, uh, is something very serious now. So now, there are already many doctors, many nurses, really now uh, taking care of uh, other people, particularly children and younger, younger people. Wonderful. Now, uh, this sort of special illness worldwide. Uh, now in India also very serious. Now the a medical sort of professor, you see they are carrying some research work, but mostly important is showing affection, taking care, especially children who have who suffer. Uh, the physical sort of weakness uh, in, in order to improve uh, that peace of mind, hopeful mind, more optimistic mental attitude is key factor. So, you see people, uh, those uh, uh, people who suffer uh, this illness, and particularly children and youth, you see, give them real sort of, what's the day, uh, sort of showing you take care about their, what's the future. So, uh, very important to keep their hopeful or optimism. Uh, because of the illness, the hopeless and then pessimistic attitude, it's very, also very sad, very bad. In spite of these illness, the mentally still hopeful or optimistic, very important. Okay. Thank you, Your Holiness. And our next question is from Adero. Hello, Your Holiness. Um, my question is, how do you create happiness with the shadow of grief over you? I lost my husband eight years ago, and it's a struggle every day to be happy without him. Now, basically, as I mentioned earlier, you see, we... Uh, human being as a social animal and your community uh, as a your how say the, the uh, basis of your happiness basis of your successful life so 
your husband one individual so it is very sad if your husband passed away but still your community still carry the or say the oneness of uh, our same community oh uh, then uh, Oh, then also, you say, uh, I'm monk. I have no experience. Uh, but uh, like young women, hmm, eventually may find another husband. Okay, no problem. <laughs> so important is all your neighbor oh, uh, should uh, keep friendly. trusted friend trusted community that is more important okay thank you your holiness and thank you adero for that question because we know that so many people are facing loss at the moment particularly our next question is from alex Uh thank you for being with us your holiness I'm Alex and I'm somewhat of an activist Um my question comes from when I look out at the world and see what is happening uh we see racism we see climate change and as a caring person it starts to feel like too much and my heart wants to close and I I I want to ask you what what can i do to stay compassionate and hopeful when in a world such as this now warm heartedness uh a part of human nature as i mentioned earlier we are social animal so that from birth we already have now we have this intelligence or uh, we should utilize human brain uh, uh what is the best way to keep happy humanity happy in a uh, family happy finally happy individual so thinking uh sort of brain then is it on top of uh, basic warm heartedness then use human intelligence then much better to keep a uh, happy community on the basis of sense of brotherhood sisterhood and then as i already mentioned the climate condition these also uh, beyond our control but so far our own community is concerned we say always keep uh the sense of brotherhood sisterhood now recent the flood uh in germany and some european countries so you see people when things become difficult then you see people come out helping each other uh that's human nature so that's wonderful uh so now mm, we should think uh utilize human brain uh and combine with warm heartedness then i think uh we can create much uh safer world and much happier world I feel that. Okay. Thank you your holiness. You are so right. It, often in response to these terrible things we see the greatest compassion and kindness and hope. Thank you. Our next question is from Rahina. A lotus to your holiness. I'm honored to be in your presence today. My name is Rahina and I'm South African. My question is 
how do we cultivate the type of friendship that you share with Desmond Tutu to grow just and peaceful communities across racial and ethnic divides? Thank you. Give Hatra trust, mutual respect. Bishop Tutu, I always consider as a senior spiritual brother. Uh, different religion, different tradition is secondary. Basically, we are same human being. And uh, we both, the practice of loving kindness and some little, little problem, then forgiveness. So, uh, the thing are uh, as a human brother, sister, and respect, mutual trust. That's the key thing. And different religion, different sort of circumstances. Uh, so that's secondary. Basically, we are same human being. Bishop Tutu. I really love him. Uh, one time he, you see, uh, publicly mentioned he very much uh, praised me. Then at the end, you see, he jokingly telling, unfortunately, this, this person is not Christian. <laughs> so you see, religion is, is a secondary. Important is a uh, human human being hum, human being. So uh, I have I think we have no sort of problem with in di different religious feeling, religious faith, but mainly on the basis of just a human brother, uh -huh, like that. So we can uh, we can develop. Uh, that kind of sort of respect or loving kindness towards entire humanity, irrespective whether believer or non-believer, uh, and believe this religion, that religion, as secondary. Okay. Your friendship with Desmond Tutu has been so heartwarming to see your holiness. The joy that you bring to each other is so clear. <laughs> uh, we now have a question from Tanya. Hello, Your Holiness. Uh, my name is Tanya. I'm a gardener and a nature lover. My question is, what single action can each member of the Action for Happiness community take to help make the world a happier place? Thank you. Oh, I think, uh, although you see some different sort of factor, but I can, uh, basically, I always consider I'm just a human being, one of the seven billion human beings. Uh, so on that basis, uh, I found many of my fr friends, trusted friends. If I too much sort of emphasis, I'm Tibetan, I'm Buddhist, then, you see, I myself, uh, isolate from other. That is secondary. That is personal matter. Basically, we are same human being. We have to live together on this planet. With that feeling, then I can also uh, develop a lot of sort of my friend, all on the basis of just one human brother. Okay. Thank you, Your Holiness. We now have a question from Kathy. Your Holiness, it is a pleasure to meet you. My name is Kathy. I'm from Bracknell and I work with bereaved people. My question is can you share with us a recent experience that brought you happiness personally? Thank you. 
I think the main reason uh, I visit different places and meet people from different faith, uh, including scientists. So when, whenever so I meet people, I show smile. They, they also, you see, showing really trusted attitude. So that's a really source of my happiness. Uh, firstly, I myself, you see, as a result of practice of warm-heartedness, I myself gain some much benefit and then share more people. And many people, you see, agree and show me similar way. That's uh, what's the uh, real sort of factor. I'm uh, one happy human being. Although politically we suffer a lot, but at the fundamental level, I'm human being. Uh, and then our uh, sort of people, uh, the Chinese side also, basically we are the same human being. You see, uh, not right to say well, these are troublemaker and so called our enemy. That is not sort of uh, realistic thinking. Realistically, we should think we are the same human being. We have to live side by side. Okay. Thank you. Um, and our next question is from Lisa. Good morning, Your Holiness. Uh, my name is Lisa Tooby, and I work as a health and wellbeing improvement practitioner in the National Health Service. My question to you is, how can I bring hope and happiness to healthcare workers who may be feeling overstretched and exhausted? Yes, now, you see people who really dedicated serving other, then uh, eventually you are mentally also a little bit sort of discouraged and feeling of tiredness and physically also a little bit sort of exhausted. Uh, so I think right from the beginning, uh, the, we should approach or we should commit, you see, this work uh, helping other at the same time without damaging your sort of physical strength. Oh. That also, you see, uh, practical. You see, you should take care of your own physical comfort uh, and mainly mentally very important to, to keep fresh mind. When you really facing a uh, hopeless situation, then uh, you should think more realistic way. Uh, for the time being, you need your own sort of rest in order to serve uh, more people, more time. Firstly, your own physical condition, your own mental sort of state should be, uh, I'll say, fit, comfortable, like that. So people who really dedicated serving other people mm, and you see, taking care of themselves also indirectly helping, serving uh, others, like that. Okay. Thank you, Your Holiness. Such a, a wise answer. We have just two questions remaining now. And I just wanted to firstly say thank you to Lisa for that question. On behalf of everyone, to all of the healthcare workers that are doing so much for others. And a related question now about the 
the, the difficult times we're in from Preeti. Over to you, Preeti. Um, uh, namaste, Your Holiness. My name is Preeti. Um, I'm a teacher at Birmingham University. Um, I recently lost my father during this pandemic. And my question is, what advice would you give to somebody who is grieving? Thank you. It is really understandable. Your dear father passed away uh, at such sort of situation. You feel <coughs> much sort of uh, worry. But then uh, we use uh, our intelligence. One, the or so the ancient Indian master, you see, mentioned, if you face some suffering, some problem, and think whether there is opportunity or to overcome that suffering or not, if there is way or if there is possibility to overcome that particular suffering, then no use, you see, worry, make effort. If there is no way to overcome, then no use, too much worry. So we should be uh, uh, also realistic. Your father passed away, very sad. But your friend, not only your parent, but also his many friend. So one friend now passed away, but still a uh, lot of human brother, sisters still there. So thinking that way, when my mother, you see, passed away, oh, I really feel uh, very sad. But then that's quite nature. Uh, and no use, too much worry. And instead of worry, uh, some prayer. Like that. So, uh, when uh, I say one dear family member passed away, then, you see, uh, think more deeper way. Uh, uh, and I think, uh, now you remain, so you have to carry the, your parents, your father's or say the wish carry continuously. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Siti, thank you for your question. And we all send you so much love uh, at this difficult time from the, the community. Um, Your Holiness, our final question at this very special event is from Daniel. Hello, Your Holiness. Um, my name is Daniel. Um, I'm one of the seven billion, two, um, <laughs> from London, England. Um, nice to meet you. My question is, I have young kids aged three and five. What's one thing I can tell them to help lead a happier life? Thank you. So you're... Uh, uh, children also is a part of humanity. So I feel the in the past we human being uh, not much sort of I think deeper awareness how to keep peace of mind, how to keep happy humanity. Now. Uh, gradually change uh, now human being uh, more sort of experienced knowledge uh, to keep peace of mind like that and a happy humanity so uh, the uh, future generation your child future generation so uh, they, also they have to face future. 
So important is warm-heartedness and uh, oneness of seven billion human beings. And my nation, my religion, yeah, my community, that narrow-minded thinking is outdated. Now uh, the younger generation must think about same humanity and live together. So that I feel uh, important. Okay. Your Holiness, thank you so much for answering all these questions and thank you to everyone in this community who has brought these very wise and meaningful and moving questions this evening. Um, on behalf of all of us involved in this community, we just wanted to say thank you for your inspiration and for helping us try to create a happier and kinder world together. I would like to now hand back to Lord Layard to close our very special time together today. Thank you. Well, Your Holiness, this has been a most amazing event. Uh, and it's lovely to see you continuing your wonderful teaching and looking so well. Uh, of course, we've, we've been following your teaching for decades, many of us. Uh, and I think I can say, for those of us who, who founded this movement, that uh, we were inspired more by you than by anybody else uh, to go and do that. So thank you for all the support that you've given us uh, over the years. Um, and thank you especially for, for this particular event. Uh, and I also want to thank... Uh, for this event, uh, the Office of Tibet in London, and everybody else who has helped to arrange this. This is quite a complicated event, actually. Uh, I want to thank the whole Action for Happiness community uh, for their involvement, and I want in particular to thank the audience uh, for being with us. So, Your Holiness, we've, ad we've adopted a new motto for our movement, which is happier, kinder, together. Uh, and I can't think of any better way uh, of uh, describing what it is that you've taught us. And let's hope you've actually made us happier, kinder and together. So thank you so much and the very best wishes to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK, see you again. Please come to come to London. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>